Welcome back, guys, to the last Ten game of tonight, to according go. to the cast, uh, well, the admins, and, well, I'm your host, Lysander Five Zenora, cents. and I'm going to be giving you your English broadcast for today. It's the GST, and we have What Up Reserve Dude. Once time. again, we visit them, and, of course, I think my new favorite, Bam, ba Bam Bang, with the pre premature GG in the last game and all that cheese tactics. We're going to see them again in this game. Big shout out to our sponsors, Corsair, AMD, Western Digital, as well as Dota Talk for keeping the show together and of course Gigabyte themselves. Alright, and of course for this cast, I am not alone. I will be joined by co-caster Lily. Welcome to the broadcast. Hello. To go. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> well, did you see the last game? Um, I caught the end of it. Yeah. I, it... I liked Don's build. It was, it was unique. Definitely interesting. <laughs> it was very unique indeed. Refresher up. Well, we started off with a Hex. Hex, you arguably could say that it was a good build, but he lacked the initiation. He didn't have the Blink Dagger to follow up with it. So I felt that the Hex was a little bit lacking. He didn't have Shadow Blade, he didn't have Hex. Any of those good stuff to set, up that, to, go. to set up that Cypher Vice. So right now, what up dude actually banning out the Naga Siren because you know why? Miracle is drafting. And that is one of his favorite heroes to ever pick up. And he does get the Miracle Wisp. So. Uh, this will be fun to watch. Yeah, I didn't actually catch Mikhail's Wisp, but I heard it was like amazing. Best yep. Wisp ever. <laughs> yep, the Wisp from Miracle. If you guys did not know, the TI3 qualifiers, he made some huge plays. But of course, he can probably not play this and give it to a support to play. And give it the, um, give the hard carry to himself. Possibly an anti-mage because, well, that's his second favorite hero after, after Naga Siren. Go. So... I'm gonna see, I believe Ice 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 told me that when Miracle's in a bad mood, he's having a bad day, he'll pick AM in pubs. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, so... Well... Uh, we, what, do you, what do you think about the bands? I mean, bands picks. Do you cast any of these teams? Um, oh yeah, I've seen them play a lot of the time. And usually they just go for hyper-aggression. That's what you see a lot from these sort of C-based teams. Uh, do, you, do you watch What Up Dude? Or do you cast them earlier in your previous game? Yeah, yeah I've cast them before. Um, I cast them today, and I've cast them a couple times in the past. And they usually go for pretty interesting drafts. They're not so standard, but they might go for standard this game because they probably know that Bam Bang, Bam Bang is a pretty strong team. Yeah, with their powerful stand-ins. Yeah, I mean uh, Miracle, a uh, very strong Ten captain on his own. Go. He does go for a lot of split push, which is very, very emphasized with this Five IO seconds. or Wisp. And Don Shuan, a very talented mid player. Sad case, they did lose it. I think Radiant's if Alchemist pit. had went with him, he probably could have got that game. But no, uh, that's in the past now. But definitely showing that they could give Mineski a run for their money. So what if dude has something to be very, very, very worried about? They pick up a Visage and a Clockwork. So going for a bit more of that lane control and Clockwork, that aerial control in the fights. Well, yeah, picking up the Visage I think is quite strong against a hero like Wisp as you're going to want to run an aggressive tri lane and just shut that Wisp down. And sure, oh, there's the anti-mage ban out. Um, actually, that's my cow banning out the anti-mage. Yeah, I, I, I have no idea why Miracle actually bans out anti-mage sometimes because it's his favorite hero. It's more up it's more up to the enemy to ban it out rather than him banning out. And he has done it, done it a couple of times. I'm not so sure if he likes to shoot himself in the foot, but I don't know. Maybe he has changed his ways. He's stopped. Well, he started Five having seconds. fun in Dota now, so well, I don't know. What 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 support, what what carry do you think you pair Reserve with? Time. I mean, anti mage and wisp isn't exactly the best combo. What do you think he would be looking towards? Um, Morphling. Maybe Morphling, since I picked up the Weaver. Weaver might be going against the Clockwork, and they'll go for something like a CK Wisp to lane mid. It's a possibility. It's kind of pretty open, but I know Mikael, or Mik Miracle, I always call Miracle. him Mikael. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thought used you were to... talking about Mir uh, Lakels. <laughs> oh, he, he used to misspell his name, and ever since then I've just I've just called him Mikael. Um, Miracle loves to split push, so I don't know. CK isn't really the best split push, even though I guess Alliance has kind of shown me wrong Radiant in that. But... I don't yeah. know, maybe something like a gyrocopter or Tiny even. Yeah. Nice pick up. Tiny doesn't look that like a miracle bad. kind of hero, but I guess he could play any carry. That guy finds farm regardless of where he might be. Uh, in the previous game, the Alchemist, he had a bad, bad, bad start with a Lifestealer Naga Rubik Trilane pressed against him, and he had no one but a Nyx Assassin for support. So instead, he ran into the jungle, Damn snack up the small go. creep camps, and got some gold on the way. And actually, Miracle banning all the split pushes here. Five he seconds. banned out the Prophet, he banned out the AM. 
He even banned out the Chen. Uh, well, the Chen is banned against him. So Reserve the Chen did cause a lot of trouble for uh, trouble for them in the previous game. Bam Bang uh, did have a good good Chen. Saved the team a lot, more than a couple of times actually. So Dyer's what big. a dude actually picking the uh, banning out the Lone Druid as well. So yeah, what up, dude? Just banning out pushes and Bam Bang also banning out split pushes. So. Maybe both teams are just going to go for a bit more of a team fight oriented build. Oh, yes. Ooh, Finally. Dyer's pick. Finally. I've been waiting for this guy. I've been picking this fella in pups <laughs> forever, and I've been winning games. This guy is just so strong in a support role. And, well, the Weaver Abaddon combo is extremely scary. Yeah, it's crazy. It's kind of like tree and protector and weaver but it's even better because it does damage and abaddon doesn't need so many levels as a tree and protector i think this is going to be like to the go. new thing weaver and abaddon because i've seen them being picked up a couple of times yeah, in the past few days even just putting that weaver aggressive and chucking that shield on him healing him when he gets low and he can just Reserve dive dive that. dive yeah Happy weaver. and i i have a feeling I don't know, it's just a hunch, but I think the Wisp it might be pairing with this Weaver because Tsukuchi allows for quick tether stuns and with Abaddon as well as the Wisp Balls, you can actually do a lot of damage but not so sure how well it could work in a Nyx Visage Trident because that's a lot of damage coming the way of, like you said earlier, the Wisp, the Visage, Soul Assumption will be able to target him down and even burst down the Weaver if he's not careful. So, I'm not so sure if well, picking such squishy heroes here and not banning the Visage was a good idea. Well, I guess that's one thing though, is that if Dance the Wisp tethers to, to the go. Weaver and a Badden heals the Wisp, that means that both of them are going to get healed. Mm -hmm. So, Radiant while they are squishy dead. heroes, that is going to give them just a little bit of an advantage um, in the trial lane because of that heal from the tether. Just means that the Badden just has to keep healing the Wisp and then Weaver's going to be on full health no matter what. Yeah. But, I don't know. What I like about Miracle is he has actually done um, a very flexible draft. They can send a Weaver off lane, they can send the um, abaddon probably because of the abaddon pick it might be a tr it's most likely an aggressive try lane but to go. they could send him they could send him elsewhere send a weaver elsewhere and go Five for something seconds. more well i don't know they could go for something more combo-y like a centaur i would love to see that <laughs> i would Zero love time. to see that because with the wisp speed centaur is gonna have no problem running up and stomping someone in the face and double dropping a double edge that double edge is gonna hurt like hell it's gonna hit for 275 at level one and you can imagine the kind of burst that it can do to a single support, especially one with no armor as well as low health, such as Visage or Nyx Assassin. So it can actually do a lot of damage. Oh, it'll be Life Stealer. So we see here that it might actually be a Weaver off lane. So the Wisp is just picked for split pushing because, like uh, the chat actually calls, uh, Wisp turns anything into a split pusher. That is true, but I don't know. I kind of suspect that the Life Stealer might be the mid hero. I could be completely yeah, wrong on that, but I think if Dragon Knight's going to be the mid for what up, dude, Lifesteal has a pretty happy, Five fun seconds. time against him. Mm -hmm. He can outlast him and he can potentially even kill him if, you know, maybe the... Well, I guess I don't really have ganking Five supports, seconds. but still, he can force the uh, Dragon Knight out of lane as he does get a lot of bonus attack damage Radiant and health bam. from the feast. Yeah, but what I don't don't really like about the Lifestealer is because his rage, he will not be able to be healed by Abaddon, I think. The shield does not pierce magic immunity. So it'll be difficult to keep him alive, or well, I don't know. Yeah, it'll be difficult Dyer's to keep him alive. Big. And now Morphling actually panned out. We spoke about Morphling earlier, and now Miracle is banning every single split pusher. He does not want the enemy to have <laughs> the map, the map presence, to deal with his wisp. I think that's gonna be the case here, actually. And yeah. they, they still have yet to pick their trial and carry. Any it's thoughts? pretty open at the moment. I don't know. I think Gyrocopter could fit in quite well. They've got. Enough of a mixture of stunning coming from the Nyx Assassin, you can come in Visage. So Gyrocopter would add a bit more of a physical damage with the attacks as well as the nuking from seconds. the Rocket Barrage. But I don't know, there's not that many carries Reserve left in the pool. Time. They could go for something in. Oh, Alchemist. Yeah, we forgot about uh, him completely. Radiant yeah, I, I hate Alchemist. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard. Yeah, what, what's, what's so hate, hateful about him? I I've hate, just seen him. I hate Prophet more. I just, I just don't think Alchemist is that good. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm saying it. I just don't think he's very good. He gets shut down so easily, and when you're running an aggressive tri lane like Weaver, about and, and Wisp, which is, I think, what the tri lane is gonna be. I could be wrong though. He's just gonna get shut down because he's gonna get harassed incredibly yeah, at the early levels, go. where he's got no armor and pretty low health, 
and he's not going to really get a chance to snowball unless they turtle for 40 minutes. That's why I don't like Alchemist, but you probably have some thoughts. I I thought you you didn't like Alchemist because he was too good overpicked in pubs, but (laughs) wow, that is suddenly a new perspective on it. Well, I think Alchemist is great. He's a carry that comes with a really good stun because a lot of carries, they kind of limit the tri-lane's aggression because they rely on the supports to set things up and for them to just, you know, swing the last right click in or, you know, set up one of their mediocre slows. But Alchemist is actually really good. If you stun someone up, you can charge up for an ample amount of time to toss it over and the minus armor, his good team fight presence. He's something like a gyrocopter, where a gyrocopter comes with his own base in uh, built-in team fight mechanism. He doesn't really need the items to do so, which is why sometimes in the rare occasions you can see a gyro being run as a Roma support, but lesser nowadays. And Alchemist, he can be done this, the same as well. He can roam at level one. He stuns stuns for an extremely long time. If you get it, uh, get out of the fog, you can easily kill the mid lane with a good rune, and you can kill anyone as well. Even in middle lane, he can survive pretty well because once he gets his ultimate, he pretty much has a free regen every few seconds. Yeah, well th- there is that. I mean, I think he's a strong hero, but I think he just... I guess it's kind of like when Phantom Lancer Coddle was like the thing that everyone did, and then people figured out how to counter it, and the metagame changed, and Phantom Lancer Coddle wasn't that popular anymore. Oh, 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 oh. Alright, this is a face rush combo. I have had some familiar uh, familiarity with this. Um, I do play on the US server sometimes with some of my friends that I met at TI and these guys they drop 5 melee all the time and it involves Tusker, it involves Abaddon, <laughs> it involves Centaur and they just run to the enemy and just crush them with overwhelming force. And because if it does happen this game, it does require some amount of uh, it does require some amount of training as well as well, I would say say training Better but it does ready. need you need you do need a little bit of familiarity oh what's this this is cool oh they do need a little bit of familiarity with this uh with this combo so the players must know how to play this heroes uh the set heroes and now wow don Schwan's actually playing a baton he could be going mid i think yeah i was just looking at that yeah all right um i'll run through bam bang and you can go through what up dude uh we're gonna run through miracle we're gonna be playing his wisp so miracle wisp and it's gonna be Vijaya gonna play that off lane weaver, I think. Maybe off lane weaver. No, he's gonna be a tri lane weaver. So Boo Boo will be the support Tasca with an early early magic sticks. It could be an could be a roaming roaming one. I, th- I think they're gonna roam at level one and kill someone. I just have this hunch. And uh, Miracle will be playing the Wisp. Like I said, Don Shuan will be playing the Abaddon. So probably solo mid two T is going on the off lane. So he played off lane Clockwork the last game. Probably gonna play the off lane Life Stealer. And on the dire side, up to you. And we might see a fight here. Yeah, see if they back off. All right, look like they will be backing off. Well, a bit of a pause. All right, uh, so we've got what up, dude, playing the Nyx Assassin. Mavis is going to be on the Dragon Knight. Nors will be on that Visage. What up? I don't know what these guys' names are. What up, dude? Happy Face is going to be playing the Clockwork, and Rar will be playing the Alchemist. Do they have names that I don't know of? No, I just called them. Oh wow, they're two what up dudes now. All right, so they're trolling. <laughs> I, I don't know, the, the last time, the last round they had proper names, so I guess we'll call him Smiley Face for Clockwork and just What Up Dude for Nyx. Yes, I can definitely call him Smiley or, Face. Or we can call him, I'll call them by the hero names. But that's the case, um, First Departure does troll a lot of their names as well, and Maneski is a really hard name to figure out. Um, they have a lot of players that love to pick names that aren't theirs. And Jay and Joven are the worst every time they change their names. <laughs> yeah. I, I was calling Jay Joven the whole. No, I was calling Joven Jay the whole game, and calling Joven Jay and uh, jo, calling Joven Bimbo. So I was really, really mad, and I don't know. Maneski just pisses me off in terms of the names, but they do play good Dota. Shots fired. Yeah, I, I've said that a lot of times, but they do play. They 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 definitely deliver when it comes to Dota. They have some exciting games, whether or not they're losing or not, or winning. They really amuse me. And now we see Miracle in the middle lane with Abaddon here. So DK versus Abaddon, I think, is a pretty even matchup. And it's gonna be a life stealer one on one against Clock. So they're gonna fight this lane out. Oh, sentries! Look at that pixel. Look at the sentry. Plants it down here. Uh, they're just a pixel away from being dewarded from each other. So again, the pull is gonna be blocked here for Bam Bang. And what up, dude? They will be taking. A, Weaver will be a little bit of a. Will be pretty good at harassing here, but what up, dude? Has to be very, very, very precise in terms of his stunning. Otherwise, the Weaver just slip away into Sukuchi. And Miracle is actually doing the pull, if you can see here in the middle lane. 
Yeah, I kind of like that. He's doing a good job with the pool, managing to take the hard camp down, which is really what you want. Taking a lot of experience away from Mavis in mid lane. Yeah, but Dontron is actually taking a lot of damage from the brief fire as well as so exchanging right clicks, I think, from from the Dragon Knight. So Mavis, once again, going to be in the middle lane, doing some damage. But Dontron, he played a good mid. He did give up first blood the last time with his SF against the Puck. But in the end, he still came through and got a lot, a lot of farm, a lot of kills on the board as well. I'm really, really wondering how they're going to build this LOA. Like, looking at his build so far, he's going for a Photic Shield and the Curse of Avernus. And normally you don't see people pick that up until a little bit later, so... Maybe he's going for a bit more of a DPS-oriented build. Well, um, there is a report out there that says Abaddon doesn't really scale well with farm, and I, yeah. tend, I tend to agree because his attack animation is pretty poor. It looks cool. I mean, he whips out the lightsaber, he just smacks you down, but it doesn't look too cool. The Curse of Avernus, you can actually opt for one point in it because um, it does give you full movement speed at level 1, so you can run someone down and not the shield is gonna explode, do a lot of damage. So you can actually exchange right clicks, oh middle lane, a bottom lane, first blood goes to uh, what up dude, so and now Tuska actually trying to get right click here, but I think he might get himself in a lot of trouble as well. Yeah, is there a second soul assumption? There will be in 7 mana, he does go through a lot of stun, nope, and stun will come out. So that's 2 kills going the way here of what up dude. So yeah, like I was saying, Abaddon doesn't really scale while farm. I think they're putting him in the middle lane for that quick XP. And I feel it's a little bit of a mistake they're not putting him a Weaver. Like you can see here, if he had, he was stunned, you can just shield the stun away from the Weaver and he'll be fine. But I think Miracle outpicked himself here. He didn't pick a mid hero. He could have gone solo mid wisp like Dandy would go. Yeah, he just... I don't know, I mean, I have faith in their ability to run these cheese strats because I... I know they're all very, very strong players, but it's definitely not looking like it's going to be going so well for them. Yeah, because the the bottom lane... I mean, the Tusker is strong if you have someone to roll in with, but Weaver is not someone you want to roll in with, and not someone <laughs> you want to block up. And I feel that this Tusker has really wasted potential here. He has 8 stick charges and nothing else. Well, I guess their aim was to be pulling this camp here. They really, really wanted to get some early pulls, get some experience, and then farm up, but they missed the block. I mean, countering the block, sorry. So I think that probably damaged them quite a lot. But I think now that the, the pull camp's going to be back up, they'll probably start pulling again, just trying to get the lane back to the tower. Yeah, and I feel that the missed call top should lane. be max first. Top I, lane. Oh, top lane. Where did Miracle come from? Yeah, but what up, dude? Will be falling here. Lifesteal will take a kill. Uh, onto him, but the thing is that I did mention it once before yesterday on another stream that Abaddon should only be uh, should max up the miscoil call first because if you look at the shield, it it does give effective HP. The miss call gives you HP. The the Fortic shield gives you. Well, it gives you effective HP, so you can eat through more HP that way. Uh, but the thing is, the Fortic Shield, first of all, it costs more. It's a shorter range. Granted, it does AoE damage, but it's a kind of like a delayed explosion. So you don't get an instant burst, and it doesn't have that big of AoE compared to Mist Call, which is at 700 range. And it does do more heal, and more slash effective HP. So the Mist Call, you should want to max You want to max it first. Leave the shield only. For, More and bottom lane. Bot lane. Oh, Bambo. Gonna drop really low there. Gonna survive there. Gonna TP in support from Miracle. Miracle's gonna whip on in. He's gonna ball up the face of Nyx Assassin. Nyx Assassin will eat birds to the face. And now Norris could be in a little bit of trouble as well. But are they gonna dive this? There is gonna be a soul assumption here. Yes, the second soul assumption. And now Miracle finding himself in a lot of trouble. The Weaver will get blown up as well. Not the start they want. And Miracle. I see you're gonna tether out. Is the question one more right click visage will get a kill? Stick charges will save his life. Big plays here from Miracle. But still, dying more and more here on this tri lane, not working out for them. I think the Wiz mid would have been a lot better. They just don't have any damage. I think that's Nyx. the big problem. Diving. Nyx. Nyx to get out of there. Nice yeah. Tether, though, yeah, they don't have enough um, damage, and a stun means an instant kill there. And now DK as well as. Oh wow, did he get something tonight? Was that a brunch? Just brunch, I think. Lane. Bottom tower is under so, so far still, this cheese is not working out too well, and the face <laughs> rush that I hope uh, would happen does not happen, and they might lose the tower very soon here. The Alchemist already has threats, already has magic stick, a lot better than the Alchemist uh, Miracle played the last game. So, well, Bambong has to be very careful if they want to play this game. What up, dude? They did make it into the, into the group stages. They have to be really good because there are a lot of teams to fight through before you can actually reach this stage. 
Yes. I don't know what to add to that. <laughs> well, what do, you, what do you think about the life stealer's effectiveness in the late game? I mean, there's a DK, there's, a, there's an alchemist. What do you think about this life stealer pick? Do you think it should have been lane elsewhere? Should have been lane bottom? No, I think life stealers are right at top. Um, I mean, farm wise, you can see he's out. Well, he's not allies hitting, but he's doing alright. He got that kill already. And, I mean, I just think Bam Bang's relying completely on the Tuskar. That's, that's a pretty bold statement, but I think if Tuskar can get a really nice snowball in in a team fight, it will probably win in the team fight. But late game, I don't think Bam Bang have really got a chance. I mean, yeah, they don't really have a chance. Well, maybe they do. It's a bit hard to say. I mean, Alchemist just kind of counters both Lifesteal and Weaver if he gets the farm, but Weaver and Lifesteal can also counter Alchemist and Dragonite if they get the farm, so it's a yeah. bit hard. I think Alchemist just beats up Lifestealer any time of the day, but Alchemist is countered pretty hard by Abaddon because you stun someone up, he just shields him, so it does remove that huge stun that you have from a stable concoction, and you, if you're unable to pin anyone down, you usually are in a lot of trouble, so Weaver is really elusive, Abaddon has the shield, on it, but if they continue getting snowballed out of control, I mean, Norris is really close. Well, I wouldn't say really close, but if you get a couple more kills, uh, the SS go will start to pile up, and once he gets Arcanes, he's going to be a lot more survivable in the lane, more sustainable with the Soul Assumption, and I'm well, going to do a lot of damage. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the advantage of the What Up Dudes draft has in the early game, is that they've got a lot of damage. In the mid game, I think Bam Bang. Bam Bang, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm sorry, everyone was yelling at me when I was casting them earlier, saying, no, it's not Ban Ban, it's Ban Ban, so I'm sorry, please don't yell at me. Um, they've kind of got a really mid-game oriented draft that has the potential to go late game if they win the mid-game, but early game they just don't have any damage. Lifestyle is one of those heroes that needs a couple of levels in Wounds and Feast and even Rage to get some DPS out. Weaver needs a lot more levels so he can get Geminate Attack as well as Swarm and Chikuchi up. I mean, they're all level-dependent heroes, I guess, to be able to deal out the damage that they need to do, whereas what up do to spell-dependent heroes in the early game? So that kind of gives them advantage and I think Bam Bang are just going to have to survive the early game get to the mid game and then make some huge plays if they want to catch up. But with the way they're going, I mean, it's one to four or five minutes in. Farm. Weaver's only on five CS, which is really, really not what you want for your carry Weaver, especially in the easy lane farm. Yeah. He's... And he's died twice. Yeah. Yeah, he's probably going to have to go for... <laughs> Report clockwork. But he's probably <laughs> going to have to go for something like a medallion and leave it to the life stealer because life stealer is having a good time. Clockwork has died once to him, the only death on the what up dude squad and life stealer oh i've seen we, we saw in the last game how scary he can actually be in the last game so oh got a call for that resume well wow. wow bm here from vijaya <laughs> well so still 1 to 4, 5 minutes in, we're going to take a look at last hits here, Abaddon is winning the mid lane pretty hard here, 27 last hits on Don Schwan, this guy loves his last hit, Mavis 16 on him, Clockwork is sitting at 25, so looking pretty good, but the life stealer is sitting just 1 CS above him, and Alchemist sitting at 20 last hits compared to, like you said, the Weavers, 5 CS, 5 CS on the Wisp as well, Tuska sitting at 1, and well, things are not looking too good for Bam Bang squad here, and a pause certainly does not help as well. You know, since early in the game, we don't have much to talk about. I can check any runes, no runes. Well, maybe there's going to be a bit of a shift now since Bam Bang are going to have a little bit of time to think to themselves. Maybe we should stop feeding all these kills a bot lane. Then again, they might not. They might just go back in because you can see the Weaver and the Tusker. Weaver and Tusker, I just never thought I'd see that lane before in a pro game. Like, that's. I just, I'm sorry, I just like looking at these two heroes running down to the lane here. It's just like, what is this? Yeah, I, if, <laughs> if anything, I think a Tusker should have gone middle. Yeah. He does pretty good middle, actually, especially against melee heroes. When you come in close, you throw that eye shots onto them, you trap them in with the creep wave, you can do a lot, a lot of damage. Uh, Abaddon, yeah, he's great, but he works well against non tanky heroes that you can man fight, and DK is not one of those heroes. You can do it against something like a Rasta, something like a Zeus, you just run him down because he can't burst you enough because you have the shield. If he bursts, if he tries to burst you, he will take a lot of damage himself and he can't outrun you on your horse and he can't turn around to stun you. So it's good against those heroes, even 
well, I wouldn't say Storm Spirit, maybe, but Zeus, Rasta, those squishy heroes in the middle lane definitely can work out for you. But DK, definitely not. Yeah, I mean, DK in the mid lane, normally he just wants to get his farm up. And at the moment, I have to say, Don Juan's doing an alright job of shutting him down. DK's only on 16 CS compared to, what is it, 27 on Don Juan? Or Don, what do you call him? Don, Don, Don Schwan? Don Schwan? Don yeah. I just call him Don Juan. Um, I'm not fancy enough. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I think Don Juan's doing a pretty good job of just keeping the DK out. He goes mid, he gets his bottle, and he just bottle crows. And he just uses his fire breath, help breathe fire to farm and that's about it that's all he does and then he hits level six and either goes for a gank or goes for a push but uh, when he's against a hero like the loa it kind of changes the dynamic he can't just use the fire breath to um or breathe fire sorry to get the farm because there's going to be a shield and heal on the creeps and shield on the hero who's going to be diving him and attacking him and stuff so i think it's a pretty interesting lineup and while i don't know if i agree with abaddon like you were saying i don't think abaddon's a very good late game carry it's kind of an interesting way to line it. Yep. And all right, over here, guys, we're going to do a little bit of lessons. What I was talking about earlier, because, well, the Miss Call can heal at a 700 range. Yep, you can heal at a 700 range. This guy's at 500. And if you can see, the burst radius is 675, a little bit less than a Miss Call. It's big, but it's, it's still not that great. If you look at the scaling, it's 110, 140, 170. Yes, the cooldown gets shorter. It, yeah, the cooldown gets really short as you, as you level up, but still, it's only 200 damage at the max level. It's 250 for the Mist Call, it's more heal, it's more sustainability. The Mist Call, it has a cooldown of 5 seconds at all levels, so the more you get into it, the more you can actually nuke from afar. And you can save a teammate, and you can do more. And in the rare cases, you can actually deny yourself. The 125 health, you can actually use it to deny yourself. So. It's really effective, especially because the miscall Call is perfect at level 1. Level 1 shield with 4 Miss Call will definitely detonate the shield. So you don't have to take enough damage, you can go for that instant quick burst with the Aphortic Shield Miss Call combo, dealing close to 400 burst damage. So that is something else you might want to look into when you guys play the Lot of Avernus. The Curse of Avernus, like I said, the move speed bonus, immediate 15% at level 1. So why not? The attack speed is 10, slow is 5, but what you want is the move speed. So in overall, you get 20% move speed over that target you were just hitting. So it's, it's really good. Why won't you go for it? Well, I guess you can stack it like that, but it is still really good. The buff, duration, the debuff still does not... The, um, does not change as the level as the level changes. So because of Vernus, you only want to use it towards the end, uh, max it towards the end. Of course, the shield is great, but Miss Call is better. So max the shield after the Miss Call. So hopefully that does help you guys out with your skill builds. But this of course a solo mid at burden, so it is a little bit different in that sense. Why are they still not unpausing? Um, do you mind turning my volume down a little bit? Oh. Someone's complaining that my voice is piercing and destroying their brain. Okay. I'm so sorry. Um, can you say something? Yeah, hello. Am I still audible? I, I don't know which... I don't know, Skype always messes with me. When I tell I it not to mess with me. <laughs> Hates you. Yeah, but okay. Nah. I'll, I'll just lower it on X split then. That's okay. right. It should be better, but I can make my voice louder, I guess. No, nah, I, I think just turn mine down. My voice is piercing. I agree, Mr. Random Guy. It's a pretty terrible voice. But yeah, um, yeah, this is a very long pause. I wonder if what up dude is gonna get a penalty soon. Um, I think they have up to fifteen minutes. Um, oh wow! <laughs> of pausing, so I I've only seen I've only seen the mods go mad once. Well, um, since we have some downtime, Lily, why don't you share a little bit of yourself to the stream? Uh I don't know. Hello, I'm Australian. I'm not British. <laughs> a lot of people think I'm British. I'll just get that out of the way now. I don't know. What do you what What would be interesting to hear? I've had 23 years of life. Okay. Um, Tell you about well, my childhood. <laughs> well, you could start with. Um, well, you could start with. 
Dota stuff, I guess. Why, why do you come to Dota? How long have you been playing? Well, Lily plays good pups, guys. She plays well. Just saying. So, yeah, you could maybe talk about that. How long have you been playing Dota? And yeah, I've been playing Dota for about hero. 8 years. Favorite hero, anti-mage. I'm a Mikhail fan. Um, Miracle. Oh my god, I'm going to call him Mikhail for the rest of my life. Um, yeah, no, I've been playing Dota since uh, Dota Rumble back in the olden days. Mm -hmm. Um... Fair hero anti mage, really? You might have lost a couple of fans there. Yeah, well, they weren't <laughs> real fans anyway. Anyone who's a real fan knows that I go into pubs and I just pick anti mage and I AFK farm for 40 minutes. And I come you... out of the jungle and my team's like, we have an anti mage? Well, the next time you play AM, uh, next time we play, you should pick AM. I didn't know you like anti mage. I'm a carry player, man. I hate playing support. That's why I pick junglers half the time, because I'm like, I don't want to play support. And so I just go into the jungle and farm. <laughs> oh, game! Yay! Right. How exciting! Alright, after a long, long pause. So the guys in YouTube will be very happy to help you link it up. But now we're going to see the Frozen Sigil does come out again. A very aggressive ice shot can be thrown out here, just stopping the push a little bit. Giving the Weaver a little bit more farm. The tower does crack a little. We probably might see another gank here. The Sigil will be fed. 90 gold to the Visage, just not something you want to give him. And Alchemist can continuously get some farm. There's a Sentry Ward there, so keeping tabs on Mr. Weaver there. So if he gets hit by a Concoction, he's dead. It's a nice placement of the Sentry Ward because it's just out of range of the tower. And I mean, it means that they can actually tower dive this Weaver. They can get the stun off before he runs out of the range of the Sentry, they'll almost definitely get a kill. Yep, soul assumption is just so good in busting down stuff like that, which is why heroes like Zeus is extremely good against Weaver. Because once you bolt him, he's not running anywhere. And now, Mavis is gonna be run down by Abaddon mid lane again. Are we gonna see a gank bottom? Nope, nope. Mavis is just gonna get some right clicks on the board. Baden. Although, I would like to see how much shield damage has been taken for the Fortic shield. Well, I guess not really that necessary. The trial in bottom will back off the mid lane. Let's take a little bit of flame damage, and last hit still top the board with life stealer. Don Shuan has fallen a little bit behind in terms of last hits, and I see a ping go out here on Miracle. Miracle is gonna go fierce mode here, and there we go. Tether stun, Mavis completely out of mana. He's no bottle as well. They they try to get a tether on him. Yeah, they finally get a tether onto him. That like I said, but the miscall is not doing that much damage, and now Miracle takes a lot of damage here. He gets the shield up, just saving his life there, and I think they still want to go in Miracle. What is he doing, this guy? He is so brave. As he is extremely brave there, and he does go down. Visage does pick him off. Miracle, I think diving a little bit too far there, and not getting the tether stun early in the gank did cost them quite a lot, I think. That was just crazy diving a Miracle. I mean, oh, maybe bottom he, lane. he was... Oh. Bottom lane, getting a stun here. Oh, I think the Alchemist could have gone a bit. Oh wow, sick snowball. Now I think Alchemist might pay for us with his life. Is there gonna be another right click? The eye shots, just a little bit short, actually blocking the Weaver there. So not able to get that kill off. And oh. still very good snowball, saving his own life there. The Tusca. I feel that Alchemist could have gone for a little bit more of that charging before releasing his blast. But this will give Weaver some space to farm bottom. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what Weaver needs. I mean, he's only on, what, 14 CS at 8 minutes? Not very good, but it's better than the 5 he was on during the pause. And I'm sure if they give him a couple of minutes farm, he's going to be able to catch up. And like you said, I think he's going to go for a bit more of a utility build. Maybe something like a medallion. Probably that uh, Ring of Aquila, maybe even a drums. Give himself a little bit more health. And I suspect, probably going to go for a BKB rush rather than... Um, a straight Lincoln's. I don't think Lincoln's going to be that useful this game against all of the lockdown coming out from the side of what up, dude. Yeah. Oh well. I will just pick up the kill up top. The clockwork once again goes down to the life dealer. Quick TP support here from what up, dude, on the Nyx assassin. It's not going to be quick enough, but with all those kills on the Weaver, two kills, he has actually gotten to the level where he can. Oh, here comes the snowball. This was the face rush we need. Double damage here. That is a dead night. Yeah, dead night is dead. Slow him. Slow him. Continuously slow him. Drops the. Drops the. Drops the miscall. Now, you see, if there was a 4 level miscall, that would have been a kill. I kid you not. They could have gone for the kill, I think. Nope, they're just gonna run at the... At the, at the yeah, they're gonna run at the Visage. And is he gonna get a kill there? Why is he switching what? targets? Why is he switching targets? Why, Don Shuan? Why do you do this? Why do you do this? Oh, Don Shuan. That was a free kill. 
couldn't make up his mind. This is why you get level 4 in Mist Coil, guys. The shield does shiz when you guys try to dive a tower. The Mist Coil has longer range and the shield doesn't usually explode within the range you want it to. And now, tower is going to be a little bit of trouble. If the Alchemist is constantly banging down at it, they might lose it. Is we even going to get a deny is the question here. Now, Raw uh, thinks better of it. It's going to back off. That was just a report on one place. Yeah. That was terrible. He could have. He had Miss Coil up. He had the mana, and he was just like, "I'll let you live." Radiant's bottom tower. Yeah. Been BM. You he could have. He could have Miss Coil Mavis as well, and the the, the Miss Coil damage would have broken the shield, but he didn't do that as well. So he could have killed the Dragon Knight as well as killed the Visage later on. And now we're gonna have a stun here. Uh, Weaver time lapse gets a. Oh wow! He gets stunned up, and now Raw is gonna come on in. Suji's gonna go through, nice eye shots, gonna drop the box on everyone else, gonna stun them up. Is that gonna be a Weaver stun? In a while, Dragon Knight picks up a uh, Illusion Rune, gonna Donchon gonna be running down the bottom lane now. Tuska gonna run away, it's gonna be slow, Weaver might stun, oh, Alchemist might stun himself, oh Visage finds him, drops him with the Soul Assumption, and now, what up dude, with the smiley face, gonna trap in Donchon, Donchon might be a lot of trouble, gets tailed up! And it's gonna be a soul assumption, keeping him alive, gonna be healing himself up, and it's gonna be a missed call, takes more damage, shields himself up a little bit too early. Now he's gonna go down. And I feel that Donshon had just hasn't been playing this hero right. Gonna be exploding, roar, not gonna get any kills. It's not looking good for them. Yeah, I wonder if maybe Mikhail just picked the LOA without asking if anyone could play it. I mean I can't imagine he would do that, but Donwan doesn't seem to he doesn't seem to have kind of a grasp on exactly how to play the hero in the lineup, in the lineup that they put him in. Yeah. Maybe. I see the chat calling Miracle out. <laughs> I see the chat calling Miracle out for no Naga, no game. Miracle wins games with Naga, so they just ban it at him right away. We see Dragon Knight actually pushing the middle lane, Don Chuan back in lane. 0 2 now on the Lord of Evidence. Furthering Maring his good name. There you go, miss call, level 2, useless as hell. And. What up, dude? The smiley face. <laughs> you really hate the miss coil level 2. Yeah, I hate bad uh... builds, man. I don't know, here we go, Tuska. Might look to roll in on this Dragon Knight, finally getting him at long last, and they are gonna use the sigil. The sigil will find the Nyx Assassin, will spot out the Visage Birds as well. Oh, are they gonna feed it? They're gonna feed another 50 gold. 90 go. Oh, Dragon comes up. Stuns up, Boo Boo. That was a Boo Boo indeed. And Tuska will go down. Mana burn to Flame Breath to the face. And he goes down. And Alchemist charge up the stun. What's he stunning? Oh, he's gonna stun up Lifesteal. Lifesteal is the last hope here for the Radiant side. The rest of the heroes has been doing really poorly. And now we're gonna see a lot of wards planted up on the high ground. And Don Shuan is gonna have another double damage room to him. Hopefully he doesn't squander it like the last one and leave heroes alive. And Mavis. Looking to do some big plays here. Stun up the life stealer from trees, I think. Would be the best call of action here. Visage familiars. Yep, gonna get one swipe, two swipes, 300 bucks. But Don Juan Johnson says, thank you very much. Oh, tries to go for the deny, doesn't find it. And Tao does go down. And Weaver does find some space in bottom lane. Yeah, his farm's just been increasing. And if they leave him like this, he'll probably be able to push two towers down. He's got that ring of Aquila. Oh, no. They're gonna start harassing him with the clockwork rocket. But still, giving him farm and giving him spaces might be a bad decision. Weaver is one of those heroes that can kind of flash farm and play aggressively enough that once he gets the levels that he needs, he will definitely be able to make an impact in team fights. He just was a little bit level starved. Yep, and now he's going to be healing up the teammates a little bit here. We're going to see if he does go for that heal on his on the on the wisp when he's headed to him. See if get more EXP, but now the eye shot's gonna go clear up the wave, and I think they're five manning. Yeah, they're five manning bomb lane. They want to force this tower down. They want to take towers, get some of the money on the board for themselves. Two D does have his armlet. Armlet now, I think. Here's the drums. Oh, open wounds on, open wounds on the clockwork. Clockwork's gonna shield himself in with the cogs. He could go off the visage instead. I might have to go back off. And now here we go. Hawk, clockwork hook does hook onto the Nyx Assassin. Gets balled in to the face. Does he have? Oh wow, triple stun here from the Nyx Assassin. No Tusker punch just yet. And Weaver uh, does go down to a whole bunch of burst damage. He does time lapse back in. This might not be a good idea. Yep, definitely not a good idea. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, sir. Soul Sumption flies out. Oh, he gets caught by the Weaver. Oh, he does get he does get tethered up by Miracle. And he might want to weave on in, but there is gonna be a nice snowball in Mavis. Does he get a kill? Weaver gets a pick off actually in the back end of play. This is a very chaotic fight. Everything going around as the shield going up on to 2D there. And now the 
And Wicked Sick here on Norris. Norris is not getting killed at all. He's just sitting there dropping soul assumptions on everyone. That's gonna be a killing spree for Miracle. And this is a dead visage, I think. That's not a killing spree for the life stealer. Oh wow! Really, Weaver? <laughs> Triple kill and oh uh, okay, that's gonna be a double kill here for Miracle. A lot of gold for that monster kill, so he will have 1,800. He could go for a mech very soon, actually. No picks up Arkanes. That was a crazy fight. Weaver was just doing... So, like, he got picked off, and then he time blacks back in, and he was doing such amazing duking. And then he must have just gotten cocky, and he was like, don't worry, I can tank it, and then just dropped. That was just hilarious. Yeah, there was the stick charges from Visage. Yeah. Stick charge, so assumption to the face, and... Oh, he just cra uh, he just split open, and well, Weaver does have threats now for a little bit more survivability. Don Juan has returned to oh, he has returned to the top lane. So he is going for Mac, just face boots to Mac. Usually you go for Arcanes, but he has gone for the Solo Mid, so Solo Mid face boots is fine. You have to bottle for the mana regen, and the mechanism will be very helpful. It allows you to keep teammates alive very very fast. Um, and we didn't mention it, but that was a team down on the side of what up, dude. They were all daddy dead buys for a moment, which is a pretty significant team fight for Bam Bang since they were losing the early game, like we were saying. But it's kind of transitioning into the mid game phase, where I think Bam Bang's um, draft is going to be hopefully pulling its weight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, in that game, it did cause a lot of chaos. What do we need is Tusker to get his level six. His punch it does a lot of damage to anyone, especially because it's a crit. So, and anyone in low health takes a 4 times crit from the Tusker, so he can actually contribute to a lot of burst damage early on if he's not careful. I've been looking to, I've been looking to try him out in pubs as well, he seems to be an extremely good hero to dive with. And, we're gonna see a Dragonite actually going for the Shadowblade build here, so looking to sneak up on someone and giving them the Fus Roda. So, nope, Don Juan being very wild here. He's gonna shield up the creep. Oh, does he wanna go for a dive? He might. Oh, miss call! Just a little bit. A little bit short. He has four points in miss call now, so I'll start complaining. That's good. On well, bot lane, Nyx Assassin was a little bit of playing with fire. Just running around quite aggressively down the bot lane. They did wanna go on oh, him. Oh, relocate! Fact, him. And is there a Tasca? Nope, it's a life stealer, and there's no way in high hell he's getting out of this one. The clockwork hook just missing life stealer by a bit, and he would be glad it happened. Because if he had hooked on it, he would be number two. The mid lane as well. Yep. They laid all ball on Mavis. Mavis drops the thing and Tontron books out says, Goodbye, Tuska. You deal with this problem yourself. And it's going to shield him out and Tuska will be yelling at him in all chat. So, they did force out the dragon form, but Tuska makes another boo-boo in this game. And, oh, Mavis. Got to work towards the Shadowblade very soon. And once that comes out, it's going to be problems. 2D with the omelette now. And Vijaya going for the instant BKB. Enough of the disables, he says. Enough of the nukes. Yeah. Well, I think grabbing up that Ogre Axe, but, I mean, so Ogre Club first, is going to be quite helpful because it does give him, what, a bonus 190 health? Which on a hero that only has about. I think 600 it's 117, health naturally. Yeah, 119, yeah, 119. probably around there. I'm not so sure. Yeah, 19, yeah. 190. Yeah, but yeah, it does give him a lot of HP. And. He will need that bit of HP if he wants to keep himself alive in the fights, but unfortunately Life Stealer is taking farm from him. 93 last hits on this guy, he has been doing an extremely good job. He played a good clockwork the last game as well. And I look to see better play uh, even bigger plays from him this time round. Doesn't he want this just yet? Miracle! Still playing his Wisp really well. He's 5 and 1 right now. This Wisp is carrying the team to victory. And Life Stealer himself as well. Don Chuan is gonna be smacking away this tower with his Mist Blade. I like to call it the lightsaber because he whips it out. And it comes here of enemies. Dyer's bottom yeah. tower has fallen. Well, they're definitely um pressing their advantage. I mean, looking at the golden experience graft, yeah, they were losing, but it has of course twisted into their favor once the mid game hit, and they're now just pushing down towers, which is what they need to do. They need to kind of get themselves enough of an advantage that they can snowball into the late game. But they're gonna have to watch out because his alchemist has got a shadow blade up, and he's probably gonna be joining oh, the team fight. Norse, them. Oh. goodbye, Norse. Gets shotted in and he goes down. No, not even a soul something. They burn a little bit of mana, but that's about it. And dude, get a kill there. Weaver actually killing him with the box. And Raw as well as the Nyx Assassin looking for a trade there, but they lose a tier 2 tower for this. And they lose, they take a tier 1 as well. So they take two towers for one. So pretty pretty worth it, I think. The Visage did die in vain there. Uh, but. 
still. What up, dude? Actually, rushing a blink dagger. You look at him. 1.3k. That's a shadow blade here on the dragon knight. So things could get real nasty for them real fast. Trying to figure out who what up dude is. <laughs> All teams what up dude. Um. Yeah, maybe it's gonna look for some pickoffs now. Although he's dragon form ending, he could look for a little bit of a stun if he does find them. But Don Shuan, the problem with facing an Abaddon is stuns don't really matter against him because you can't actually burst down the Lord of Evidence. You you try to focus him down, he pops that ultimate and anytime he gets and he starts regening up. You can't even kill him, he does regen up a Weaver in bigger trouble, gets the stun, gets the poke, gets smashed to smithereens. And now it's gonna be a relocate here. Okay, here comes the lifestealer gonna be raging on in. And I think Alchemist is in big trouble. Five seconds on that, you won't even have that five seconds, sir. Goodbye. And now what up dude had to walk into the tether because why not? Two kills! And that is gonna be two T getting two kills for a for Weaver, your Alchemist taking a fall there. That's not a good thing. Miracle. With a gem now, so even if the Alchemist had jumped into that Invis, it wouldn't have mattered. That was really, really nice counter initiation, just showing the power of a Wisp with basically any DPS carry. Even though they didn't go for the kind of traditional, you know, CK Wisp, Tiny Wisp, Ursa Wisp, whatever Wisp, um, the lifestealer really is just showing his worth. He got enough farm in the top lane with the help of Mikhail Ganking, and now he's going to be doing whatever he can while Weaver gets some farm up. Which is definitely going to help the team out a lot. And since Weaver is getting closer and closer to his BKB. Yay, Weaver. Yep. And oh, Don Juan is actually going for a soul ring now. Realizing he kind of likes mana. I, I want to see this. I want to see this. I think he's going to try and pop the soul ring through borrowed time. But I don't think it works that way. But if it does, that is something I want to see. And now, go to shield. And there it goes. Shield here on the life stealer. And you all get blown up. <laughs> that is a big, 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 big bait there. Life stealer just sitting there saying, so what's up? And there it goes to shield. A lot of birds. Relocate comes on in. Visage, try and run, bro. You try and run. There, there the birds following him. Gets tatted up. That's the eye shot. There is the wall in. He dies. And there is Onage from the announcer there. Boo boo. Doing a better job now. Now that he has his ultimate, and he will be tatted back to the front lines there. Just a lolling. And the tower will fall. And Alchemist might not have the time to farm it up despite his early start. Because he did not go for Grievous Greed early on because of the aggression going on in the lane. Miracle's draft yeah, actually working fun. out. Yeah, it definitely is, but is this because of the draft or because of the players? Yeah, it could so. be because of the players as well. But it is the draft coming into uh, rotation here because Abaddon just keeps carries alive. That is one of his biggest strengths. He keeps any kind of carry with an escape alive. If you try to burst down the life stealer, that is. Yeah, you try and burst him down, you try and chain stun him, you start off the Dragonite stun, he baits it. And then he gets he gets the shield instant into rage instantly goes into the rage. You can't burst you can't stun him anymore. And there's gonna be an explosion from the shield with his two hundred. There's a death pal I mean the call and then the whole team jumps on you and that's when it that's when all hell breaks loose. And actually Raw getting a whole bunch of farm here in the in the ancient stack. Yeah, it's definitely gonna help him a lot. I have to say I love it when support stack the ancients. It's just beautiful for a carry. Suddenly they say, hey, by the way, I stacked the Ancients for you, and you're like, oh, I love you. <laughs> so much. Um, yeah, no, but I mean, looking at his GPM, I suspect it's going to have jumped up quite significantly after farming that. Especially with the Max Grievous Greed. Lifesteal is having a great game. 7-0, 500 GPM, 300 only, only, only on the Alchemist, 300, close to 4. But still, you don't normally see a Lifestealer out farming an Alchemist this stage of the game just yet. But then again, the Lifestealer pretty much got a free lane because Cogs can't really harass the Clockwork. And Lifestealer can just run up, hit him a few times and just back off. So Clockwork can't really stay in the lane. There's a smoke gang coming up here from Norns as well as Raw here. So we're going to see how that actually goes for him. Vijaya, he has picked up his Mithril Hammer and he will have BKB in 100. So he will be able to weave in out of fights for the next fight at least. He will have 10 seconds of BKB on him. And with Abaddon just keeping the shield on him, I think it's going to be pretty easy to get out, get in our battles. Right now, I think the problem with what's up, dude, is they don't really have anyone they can burst down. Because with the shield, with the mech, there is no one you can actually burst down. And now there is the Roshan. And the Sigil does slow. The, um, does slow Roshan's attack here. And oh, Alchemist gonna stun himself. Not gonna be too happy about that. They're gonna get a free Rosh, I think. Double damage as well. Yeah, with the defensive heroes that what I've have picked, I mean, of course, Life still has got the natural BKB. And Don Juan has got the purge from the Aphotic Shield, and now even Weave's got the BKB up as well. It does mean that it's going to be very, very hard for what I've to, to kill anyone. And they probably 
probably they needed to push that other game advantage, but now that they've lost the advantage they had, they're just going to have to kind of play it a bit safer, which is going to be quite hard given the aggression that's going to be coming out from Bambang now. Yep, Episode right. Blade here for the life stealer. This is going to get real bad. And a, a little bit of a small play there, 2 did was to actually convert himself into rage form before uh, Roshan actually went down. So ensuring he got, uh, he will not be stunned before the Aegis was picked up. And well, unfortunately for him, Visage Birds do stun through uh, magic immunity. So something for you guys in case you need to cancel a TP in the future. So the Visage Slam, the, the birds dropping from the sky do stun through magic immunity. So that's something for you to note as well. Nope, gonna trap, not gonna trap him in. Very lucky, but oh, Lifesteal just laughs at a visage. Oh, you're gonna hook on in, you're gonna push them all away. Gonna pop the dust there a little bit late, but now that it's gonna right click the tower, Don Juan, or Don Juan, he is gonna try. I'm gonna see if the soaring does work there. Oh, just get the mech, just get the backtrack, and Don Juan will help his stick charge so as to not automatically activate Borrow Time. And I wanna see if Don Juan's soaring works with Borrow Time. Radiance top tower is under attack. Um. I, I don't know, it's... I'm waiting to see. Does yeah, it work with a right shield as well? Uh... I don't think it does, but... I would like to see... Oh, Norse in big trouble! Here comes the big ball! Do not get stunned together! Oh, they got stunned together! That is not gonna be good! Abyssal Blade and Miracle does go down, but here comes the punch here on the Clockwork Goblin! And he's gonna get bashed up on the first hit, because why not? And the KS is it with the... Oh, now they're all gonna die! They're all gonna die. Yep, they're all gonna die. That's a stun. This is why Snowball is not exactly the best. They snowballed into an Elk stun, and that is gonna be a problem for them. They can run away. Yeah, I think he's gonna get caught. Definitely gonna get caught. Tail to the face, and juke, juke, juke. No jokes. Miracle buyback. Is he gonna relocate? Yeah, Miracle is gonna relocate here. He's gonna tether over. No, nope. I think he might have tether over to the wrong time. Oh wow, he, is there an omelet toggle? What an omelet toggle there. Gets a stun, gets another omelet toggle, gets two kills. What? A player, this guy, and he just leaves 2T there, and that was some sick playing from this guy, and he's gonna get a bunch of familiars for his hard work, why not? Pop! No, not gonna get it. So this guy is the true MVP of this game. Miracle's like, oh, I think I can leave you there now. That was huge armor toggling by him. I mean, yeah. I, uh, was that a script or what? That was crazy. He was being whacked on by three heroes, sorry, three heroes, heroes, three heroes, as well as the Visage Familiars, and he managed to armor toggle through it. Yeah, that, that was... takes super skill, uh, or like you said, scripts. But there, there was no acid spray for that one, unfortunately, the Alchemist did pop it around here. So, if there was acid spray, armor toggling would not be able to work there. But still, great job here from the Life Stealer. Armlet is just pretty broken. And what up, dude? does have the smiley face, I mean smiley face does have his mechanism now, so we'll be able to keep himself alive. One of the good things of course for that team fight was that they saved the tier 3 and they saved Rex. Now we're gonna see a haste rune. Pause. So the Dragonborn has DC'd out, took an arrow to the knee. Yeah. Took an arrow to the knee once. Um, yeah, wow. I, I really do like how Bang has been playing this though. They've definitely taken advantage of the well, the pros that the strategy had. I mean, the one problem was, of course, diving into the base here. It's probably not really a good idea to be diving so aggressively, especially when you've got heroes like Weaver and Lifestealer. They can just kind of whack down to the tower and just be healed up by Wisp and LOA. There's no real need to go diving into the base of the Tusk Oh, unless... clock. Oh. Yep, no, nope, yep. Yeah, it's sad. That, that's the problem with the snowball one of the the the, well, the drawbacks of it is to ball your entire team into an AOE. Uh, one of the good counters to a Tuska of course is a Jakiro, but then again Tuska was the last pick surprise. So there was no chance for what up dude to actually counter it. So that was a good play here from that was a good play from the Alchemist, but still it was a little bit too late, a little too late, and they did chase the life stealer, they didn't expect him to actually own. I was expecting him to die there, but he didn't. Yeah. The, I think the tether stun actually gave him a little bit of a time to I'm gonna toggle that. Oh <laughs> wow, a <laughs> hook defensively? Uh, okay, there goes the counter initiation and now 2T, I think he's just gonna roll over. Yep, no cocks. First hit bash. This guy is the absolute bash lord. The snowball wasn't even necessary. They do get a stun here, and the Soul Summoner flies out because it doesn't do much anyway at this point in the game. And now he's gonna be right clicking the tower. Right click the tower. 
No, they force out the glyph when there's no one hitting it. When there's no one hitting the tower, rage dodge the soul assumption because he can. And here comes the stun. Uh, Don Schwan is gonna get a stun now. He's in all trouble. Another bash on the fucking on the second hit. Snowball rolls on in on the next and punches him in the sky. Raw trapped in the eye shots, trying to run. Just run, bro. BKB. He tries to pop his stun. Gets the dragon tail off. Wow, that was a good stun. And someone did die there. Nope, oh, Iodis die. Weaver picks up Alchemist. Lifestealer picks up the Dragonite. Both of them buy back. And now we see base dives. Base dives. Stop the base dives. Take the tower. Tuska has fallen. Don Chuan gets the shield up on his ally. And now he's going to heal himself up. And there's going to be more holy shitting. Going on. 2D is just rolling through everyone. Picks up the gem on his way out there. Don Chuan is just. Oh, the rampage. Gone. Triple kill here for the DK. Because Don Chuan abandoned his teammate. He's such a player. And he's gonna run away from the Dragonite. Dragonite, I think, won't have it. No hook as well. And he will probably get out of life. And so, Don Schwan fearing more for his life there. Letting the Lifestealer die, actually. He did go for 16 and 0 until Don Schwan. Uh, Guess what? They didn't take the tier 3. Ball on in. What up, dude? And that was a disastrous snowball. Dragonite. Let me damage dealers. It's a point in snowballing in. Um. But yeah, wow, come on guys, hit the tower down. They were diving into the base for like a solid minute. And they took... Yep. Well, easy. Yeah, they took 400 damage from the tower, like... Yeah, they, they weren't even hit, you weren't clicking it. The what up dude guys just glyphed for nothing. So next yeah, level. Yeah, that was... Questionable. Questionable glyph. Man, I, I would kind of like it, honestly, if Lifesteal would just create Havoc a top lane and Weaver would just kind of trot down here and just destroy this tower. I would like that. Can you please do that, Weaver? And then Weaver can just get the racks. Even though he has no damage items, I think someone going for racks would be better than no one going for racks. Nah, they just want to kill stuff. Pat the kill reel here. I mean, Lifesteal hasn't got enough. He has 16 and 1 right now. He just wanted that rampage, but he got a tail to the face. And that was the end of all his fun. Uh, Weaver, meanwhile, teasing the next assassin here. The Shukuji up and down top lane with all these invis. This is this is pretty much Seed Order right here. Everyone is invis. Look at this. Invis. 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 Well, invis. Yeah, Seed Order. Everyone plays invis. If there's a prophet here, I'll point your finger, point your finger right at him as well, uh, because that guy is the king of rat. King of Rat, yeah. No, Don um, Don Schwan farming up. Assault Kuros for the life stealer here. He has some sick farm. He's coming his way, and with this assault Kuros, I think this could be the death push. Uh, what up, dude? They are really far behind in terms of EXP. Even though that sick dive that happened, there was a 14k uh, EXP disadvantage. There's a 10,000 fa in favor of Ben Bang here. So. If you look at the the life stealer, his net worth is twice everyone else's. I mean, he's really. If they focus fire him down, I feel like Bam Bang is gonna have not too much for their team to offer. It's really all just the life stealer. Yeah, yeah that's me. Don Chuan has a BKB now, so BKB is actually pretty important on uh, a lot of evidence because sometimes uh, you might think that oh, I have shield, I have my ulti, I'm okay. But the problem is, you get caught with um, you get caught with your ulti. The minute you get ulti, it's really low. Someone just disables you, or spins you up in the air, or does something funny. You get stunned, and you get caught there. You can't run out on the ultimate. So, and now I think they're gonna roll down Roshan to mainstream. Two minutes. We're not waiting. We're gonna roll on in now. I think they're gonna roll on in. Definitely. Double damage in 2T. What a better time could that be? There we go. Sentry Ward immediately wasted. Yep, double damage. This guy's gonna hit like a truck now. I'm gonna delay it a little bit more. Tether. And here we go. Rage. Goodbye. Nyx Assassin. Go nearer. No, no, no. Don't do it. Don't do it. Good, sir. And they're, they're gonna do it. Yep, they're gonna do it. They just won the kills. And now, Life Stealer dies. And they're diving and diving. What are you guys doing? Weaver, BKB's up, tries to run from a whole bunch of towers. There's Sukushi's himself out there, gets slowed by the dragon. And nope, there we go. Stun, Dragon Tail, picked off. And, well, and I think Miracle's gotta be pretty mad about that one. They get a tier 3, but they lose a whole bunch of heroes. 
I don't know what they were doing. And after that nice set of throws there, they will not have buyout on the life stealer, no buyout on the weaver, and that is gonna be Roshan for the Dire team. The what up dude guys say thank you. Thanks for throwing against uh Alchemist. Alchemist has Shadow Blade as well as um as well as Assault Kiras now, so the time of throwing has passed. They throw a little bit more and they're gonna lose this. Did a Skype drop? Radiance top tower has fallen. Did a Skype drop? Okay, I, I seem to have lost Lily there. Well, just gonna be continuing it for a while and. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh. I okay. had my mic muted. <laughs> okay, so yeah, huge throws once again. Is this? Yeah, no, I don't know what they're doing. I mean, this Tusco is probably a bad pick purely because he seems to think that Snowball is the skill that you use to get as far into the base as possible. <laughs> That Boo Boo should just lay his hands off Tusker. He should not be playing this hero at all. But it is such a good hero. But he has been messing up for his team. And they have been dying a lot there. Don Shuan has managed to survive once again. But now, like I said, Alchemist has been getting some items. There's a Heaven's Hailbird on the Dragon Knight now. It's going to be very hard to bring him down. And Roshan is up. We're going to see the next fight. Definitely a contest for Roshan here. And Ba Bang, if they lose this, they're out of the tournament because they're already one game down. Dragonite DC is out, so that's a pause. Yeah. And they do but see I mean, him. Us... Oh, you do see him? No, they do see him. Oh yeah. I don't know, man. Ben Bang had this in the bag. It was the game, and what's the golden experience graph? It's not that much of a drop down yet, but man. If they lose one more theme fight, like you said, they've got an alchemist on the side of what up dude and a dragon knight, two heroes who can take down a tower like the click of a finger. I can't click my fingers though, so I won't be able to do that to show you. Um, so I mean, bam bang, if they do this anymore, they are going to lose the game because yep. they're going to lose a Rax. You don't throw against alchemists. You do yeah. not throw against alchemists. That is the number one rule. You do not throw against Alchemist, you don't throw against Anti-Mage, you don't throw against Spectre. Those are the three heroes you do not want to throw against. And yeah, you don't want to throw against Bounty Hunter as well. But now Roshan will be going down. Are they gonna go for it though? I think what's up dude might go for this. Clockwork is waiting in the wake. Oh he hooks on in! Does he hook it? He doesn't he hooks what do you hook? He hooks Roshan. Oh he hooks Roshan. You can't hook in the Roshan? I you think I think you can't. Uh, no, it can be a creep as well. And now Mavis could be in a bit of trouble. Stop diving, Tasca. Go away, Boo Boo. Don't do this to your team. And now Shikuchi <laughs> will pick off some familiars. Don Shuan secures that. He's one and four, by the way. <laughs> I like Boo Boo as a person, but oh, look at his score: zero to nine. <laughs> Who's zero nine? Oh yeah, Boo Boo. Is there a knight? Oh, now we go. Life stealer. No, no, don't do it. Nope. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Hit the Rex. Yeah. Now that's a sign of miracle. That's a little bit of trouble. Where's that shield, Don Chuan? Where's that shield, 2D? That's gonna be a snowball. Snowball's in. Surprise, Mr. Nick's assassin. He gets brought down. He buys back out. Ice shots traps everyone there. There is the face rush in your face, literally. And Mavis is gonna go down. BKB's everywhere. Don Chuan just rolls through, cuts through everything. Alchemist takes a fall. What up, dude? Mr. Smiley face, clockwork, you- no, no, stop diving. Okay, the Rex goes down, that's one set of Rex at least. And Boo Boo might want to get shielded here. Nope, no shield for you, says Don Shuan. He is out of mana anyway. And that's a triple kill here for 2D, back to his killing ways. They will take off the range Rex, and they're gonna open wounds up on what up dude. Tether stun, one more kill. Ultra, where's that Rampage? Give me that Rampage. He's gonna go for it, that guy. Once his kills up, no clockwork, this might be his Rampage. Yep, Rampage, give it to him. Give it to him, give it to him, give it to him, give it, no, no. <laughs> No rampage. Oh, but he gets the first hit bash on Raw. Is there gonna be a rampage? No, they're slowing it down too much. The timer. Oh, rampage, rampage. No rampage. Are you? Of course, miracle. Of course you do that. Of course. And now this is just this is just sad here. No rampage for him. So 2D is gonna be really mad here. More ragey than Life Stealer is. And the tower will go down. And I think. Oh, what up, dude? Finally gonna be out of this game. They have dropped two games, so I think that will be the end of their run here in the GSD August. I could be wrong, but dropping two games usually means you lose the group stages because only the best two do proceed into the playoffs. And well, Miracle and his team do manage to prevail despite the throws. Despite the throws. And now the tower will shatter, and the last set of Rex will be taking a fall there. I don't think they can deal against this guy. They entail nothing. And Clockwork, not so sure what he's doing there. Giving up on life, Don Shuan. 
gonna be trapped in there. Gonna get burned a little bit of mana. Double stun goes out on him and it activates his ultimate, burns a little bit more mana, heals him up a little bit. And what up, dude? Gonna send himself to hell, but they leave him alive. They spare his life. And not for long though. One swipe, the curse of Avernus, gonna speed everything up. No, what up, dude? Don Shrine has got other people up. Size. Oh, BKB surprise! Clicks him down, and we are uh, gonna get a double kill out of that. And I think GG should be coming anytime soon. Yep, GG. I'm very proud of Tudy for having a cool ahead and actually killing the Raxes. Oh, wow. Sick dodge on that Alchemist stun. And they kill Alchemist before the game ends. Good luck, mates, round, and yep, that's gonna be GG from all of them. A very entertaining game. Miracle delivers with one of his cheesy tactics once again. And <laughs> really, really funny game. Oh well, it was entertaining at least. Yep, it was very entertaining. I love seeing Abaddon as well. Love seeing Tusker. And well, Bam Bam will take a second game. I think they did win one more, so they will proceed in the group stages. So Miracle keeps his dream alive. Not so sure if he's a permanent member or is he just gonna be a stand-in for the rest of this because I don't see first departure anywhere on this qualifier. So well, and wait. That is going to be the last game for tonight, and if you like my casting, I am Lysander Zenora. Follow me on my twitch.tv slash Lysander Zenora, and follow me at Twitter, like me on Facebook as well. I'm joined here by Lily, Porcelain Lily. You can do your plug-in. Yeah, Porcelain Lily. I, I'll, I'm typing in chat the whole time. If you guys want to follow me, you can. Yep. That's, that's my plug. <laughs> Alright, so you can type it after the game actually ends on stream. So... Yeah, that's Lily and Lysander and on behalf of Beyond Summit. We thank you guys for watching tonight. And I believe that's the last game. Yeah, it should be the last game. Yeah, it is. Last. Yeah, it's the last game for tonight. And thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for Group D. We will have LD, Lydion Dreams. So, yes, confirm he's the owner, guys. Kappa, kappa, kappa. And yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. I'll play a few more songs before turning off the stream for tonight. Rebroadcast will be coming up soon for you guys that are living in a different time zone from us. And hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Alright, see you guys and good night. Good night. <laughs>